Here we go. No nation. Welcome into another episode of the Renegade Rundown. A very special episode of the Renegade Rundown right here on Easter Sunday. He has risen. Happy Easter to the entire FSU fan base, to all our fans. Uh, as I said on the last show, the Greek Easter is coming up uh, here in a little while, so we'll have to celebrate that one as well. Uh, but I hope everybody had a great Good Friday. We was with you Friday also. We wanted to make this show a little bit later so everybody could, you know, celebrate with their families. You know, I got to hang out with my family. Uh, Jen has, how many, you got four babies, two like really young babies that are in Easter egg hunt mode. So yeah. before we yeah. get into the ACC and we will let you guys know, that's going to be the main juice of this show. After we talk Easter, we're getting into the Big Ten FSU. How soon can it possibly happen? But the kind of latest rumors, the latest um, allegedly out there, uh, kind of that goes along with our opinion and everything we've been telling you up to this point uh, really makes a lot of sense. And it spells disaster for the ACC and uh, things are looking really good for FSU on that front. But first off, how was Easter, Jen? I know you've been like busy. You guys did breakfast, <sighs> lunch, dinner, breakfast, the whole nine yards. Lunch, yes. Breakfast, lunch, uh, Easter egg hunts, Easter baskets. Um, the Easter bunny was up kind of late last night. I'm not going to lie. Um, had to make sure that little kiddos weren't up looking around to see if the eggs had come or the baskets had come. So it's like 12 30. And I'm like, man, the Easter bunny's really tired. <laughs> what are people stuffing in eggs these days? Because I remember my mom, you know, coming up, not trying to, you know, throw a straight shade on you, mom. This was good money back in the days. But like, if you had three dollars and quarters in your egg, or a five dollar yeah. bill or something, that was like, man, I thought I hit the jackpot. Are you like throwing twenties and fifties in these things? Hell what's, no. What's what's the inflation like for these youngins these days? Look, I mean, mine are seven and four that are the Easter egg hunting ages. So they get a dollar, they get a couple quarters, they get some candy, they get um I, I did some stamps from the dollar store, like stamps that they can stamp their hands with like little bunnies or chicks, right? Um so it's been fun. Uh yes, uh my cat is still pregnant. Yes. Happy yes. Easter, Stephanie. And again, happy Easter to everybody. Um, <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> referring to the pregnant cat. It's, yes. It feels like it's been three weeks you've been telling us. It's like any minute now. Jen has been to the vet. She's confirmed ultrasound and everything. Like she's having kittens. So uh, it's, it's going to be a good crazy. reveal. She's. You're hoping for an onion, correct? For an all white one? Isn't that your thing? Yes. Yes. Um, I. They don't know how many, but they're thinking maybe by Wednesday. So it could be anywhere from today until Friday. Who knows? Okay, but who knows? Right here. Tuesday show, Friday show. There we may have is. some kittens for you guys. What's your name again? Um, this is Nora. 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 Wow, that's funny. I'm actually watching a TV show. Um, and one of the main characters is Nora. But nobody will know what that show is. Well, she uh, but usually, I'll keep on. She usually <laughs> hates everybody. She never gets in anyone's lap. So now here she is, and she won't leave me alone. So it has to be coming here soon, right? Well, I love um, it, man. Apparently, mm -hmm. people are ready for a show. We've got already like a hundred people I in know, here. So right? this is hey, guys. this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'll get right into it. Okay, I'm going to drop the bar. Okay. Kind of, you know, what I'm thinking. Get Jen's initial response, and then we can really kind of get into it. We've talked on this show a ton as things have happened, kind of before they happened. Uh, you know, we've been called this or that, you know, oh, you're conspiracy theorists, this is stuff. Well, luckily, right. uh, we've had some pretty good sources. The people we've talked to have been right. And we've been kind of ahead of this thing. Hey, look out for UNC, this or that. And then next thing you know, oh, here comes a statement. You know, look out for Clemson. Oh, here comes the suit. Uh, look out for this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. Well, currently the stage we are in, we are waiting for the judge to rule in North Carolina. Uh, we have a court date in Tallahassee on April the 9th. These are the two big things going on. As I mentioned, Clemson has joined the party. They filed suit in South Carolina. ACC returned the favor and filed in North Carolina. Well, throughout this, I'm not sure the exact amendment. We had a show. We talked about all of it. One of the amendments had to do with the college football playoff. And the ACC bowed down pretty recently to the college football playoff. 
and they decided, look, you know, we're going to take this reduced amount, 31%, one bid, yada, yada. In effect, put into writing that, hey, you know, we know we can't compete with the SEC. We can't compete with the Big Ten. Um, it's one of the main reason they want to hide the numbers, this and that. Um, if you've watched Spear Attic show, the media group, uh, they've been, you know, kind of the first persons to speak on this. If you watched this show, I believe it was Thursday. Um, you know, he laid out a bunch of information, a date of June 30th, where these kind of schools, you know, there's a lot of rumors, seven, eight, nine ACC schools could dissolve the conference by then. Okay. Well, the latest kind of rumor out there is, look, ESPN has already pretty much let ESPN know the deal. Look, or ESPN has let ACC know the deal. Like we're not extending this thing through 2036. You know, as it stands right now, it's going to end at 2027. And I'm going to lay out my case because, again, this is allegedly. Um, and, you know, when you have multiple kind of sources that have said stuff, but you can't put your name on it. This isn't something that I can report. This person said it, this and that. But this is just um, everything and kind of where I'm at on it. ESPN is sitting there as a business and they've got to decide, OK, we've got until February of 2025 to decide what we're going to do. How are we going to move forward? Are we going to extend this contract exactly how it is, um, you know, where it increases with inflation so much, you know, by 2036, I believe it'll be up close to maybe 40 something, 50 million. It does get a little bit better, um, but just terrible. Or are we going to have to just scratch this thing and start afresh? How are we going to be able to you know, handle this thing? Well, again, that date I just mentioned, they have until February 2025 to decide. We'll go back to the first thing I laid out for you. There's two court cases going on for two different schools right now. Okay. There's no way in hell that Clemson or FSU or if UNC files suit a fourth school, a fifth school, there's no way the ACC will be able to settle all this by February of 2025 to then be able to negotiate in good faith with ESPN and say, this is going to be the product. This is what we've got locked in through 2036, three of the last 10 national championships. I guess it's 11 now um, when you count Clemson and Florida States and on and on. Florida State has 16 of the last 32 ACC champions. Literally. I mean, you lose half your, your ACC championships in the past 32 years. Um, you take everything Clemson's done, pretty much dominate for the last decade. Um, so that's the reason. Uh, a lot of people, and right, like, rightly so, looking at this from the outside in, say, well, you know, why would ESPN drop them? Why, why would they? They're not going to drop ESPN and Clemson. That They've got them tied up through 2036. But that simply is not um, a fact. And this isn't what I'm about to say isn't new. You guys that are here all the time, you've heard this a ton. These lawsuits are not determining whether FSU and Clemson can leave the ACC. It just has to do with whether the grant of rights are applicable, what the exit fees are going to be, um, things of that nature. So, and also in another one of these um, amendments, the ACC clearly laid out that there is a path for FSU or Clemson to buy these rights back. So that's the worst case scenario. They pay some exorbitant fee. Um, the only chance for the ACC to stay together, be able to continue that thing from 27 to 36 would be to be able to somehow convince Florida State Clemson to stay. You know, maybe you add a Notre Dame or something and you can really get a new contract with new money. Um, but as it stands, there's just, you know, I'll stand on it. Like I said, it's allegedly I don't have a source to put out there or anything, but I believe in my heart 100 percent that ESPN has, you know, pretty much let ACC know what the deal is. And I have no doubt as well that that the ACC has not passed that on to the members whatsoever. Um, their play kind of been this this whole time has been to just get through 2025, get this thing extended and whatever happens, happens. But FSU, North Carolina, Clemson, these teams have seen it. Um, but I'm going to quit running my mouth and let Jen speak, uh, and then uh, mm -hmm. we will get into it, open it up for questions, uh, have a fun conversation here. Um, would it surprise me? 100% no. No. But I do think that if, well, maybe it wouldn't come out. I don't know. Um, I guess ESPN probably wouldn't leak it because of where one of their biggest schools are probably going. So, I mean, they may not leak it. Um, 
But this shouldn't be surprising. Should this rumor be true, and I'm just saying, it should not be surprising. You cannot lose your biggest cash cows, who won out of the conference, and a third, who has yet to file anything, but a third that everybody knows about, right? And think that ESPN wants to stick around. Nobody, I'm, I'm sorry, nobody cares about Wake. Um, by the way, congratulations to NC State today. Still nobody cares about you. You beat Duke, but still nobody cares about you. What, what the um, hell was Danny Cannell doing there? So, uh, what did he do? Uh, he was hanging out in the crowd of the NC State game. I get cheering um, Duke losing, but I don't know who he was hanging out with. I hope that wasn't Boo Court. You know, I don't think it was. I 100% Anyways, I don't think so. I think Danny would probably be the first one to start catcalling him at a game, to be fair. <laughs> we know that Danny Cannell is kind of a troll, so I, I'm not going to uh, um, start saying he was hanging out with them. I could totally see him just booing him in the crowd and filming it and then posting it on Twitter. To be fair, I think that's exactly what he would do rather than hang out with him. But... Um, yeah, I uh, congrats again. Congratulations, NC State. I'm not trying to be a bitch, but um, sorry for Duke. Not really, not at all. Uh, but for me, this whole thing has been ESPN is never hanging on to the ACC without Florida State or Clemson. I honestly, I think they would have rescinded it even if it was just Florida State leaving. Absolutely. I don't think they up it. Yeah, see, and this is the thing we've, again, we spoke about these rumors before, um, you know, for a fact, adding Cal, adding Stanford, adding SMU, this wasn't to improve the conference, this wasn't to take it to another level to compete with the power to, it was simply to keep that number of conference members to a certain level when the inevitable bleeding stopped. Uh, and you know, there is some kind of competition clause, some kind of something in that contract to, as jen alluded to that if you lose members you know things are up for renegotiation especially when it's you know on the board for renegotiation right here at february 2025 they have a literal cutoff date whether to extend it and that's what i want to kind of highlight here and i've talked to different people about it you know uh we're all you know we have a pretty good group of friends and podcasters and everything we talked about it um but here's the thing about like the way kind of the rumor goes like just because the ac the espn said to the acc you know that thing's done uh we're gonna have to redo this contract as me and jenna are alluding to that doesn't mean necessarily they're done with the acc they won't have the acc as a product anymore but just understand without a fsu or clemson it is going to be wildly different and it started with clemson uh, we had been talking about it as a fan base, but FSU had came a little bit more, I don't want to say timid, but just measured, poking and prodding to see what the ACC would do. Well, Clemson watched that. They came out and said, look, they worded it to where they said, we're out. You know, you don't hold us. You don't own our grand rights. As soon as we get out, however it happens, it's over. There will be no home ACC games where you have the money to. And FSU's latest filing, as we talked to you on Friday when we broke it down, is worded strongly um, in that same manner. So make no mistake, there is no way in hell that ESPN would be tied to a conference uh, and its best two guys, you know, walk out. Like uh, uh, there's been talk about, you know, Big 12 could swallow the ACC or vice versa or, you know, ES, you know, the ACC could do something to, you know, to scrounge up some value and get a new contract. And I don't doubt that, but it's just not going to be the same conversation without FSU and Clemson in there. Expedition Greg comes up with a great question. How soon do you and George think direct talks will begin at Gen Null 2013? So I'll definitely well, let you take that one first. Well, one, Florida State has to be available for direct talks to happen. Um, legally, Florida State would have to be released from the ACC in order um, for any sort of talks to happen. They would have to file an official notice that they're leaving um, and they would be available at that point. So either they pay their money or the settlement happens or they file a notice that they're leaving, um, which they're not going to do without a settlement because that would be insane. Uh, so um, I do think uh, that they will be out sooner rather than later, but it will they will have to make themselves available in order to get a indirect talks with the Big Ten or the SEC, or if Dennis Dodd gets his way, the Big 12, 
What were you talking about? <laughs> so, a whole bunch of weird stuff. <laughs> no doubt. Sorry, I was a little lost in the chat. I thought uh, <laughs> Expedition Greg had something else, but he, he was talking to somebody else in the uh, uh, in the thing. Nick Snyder says, will this accelerate settlement negotiations? And that's a great question. I mean, that is the ultimate question that we've been considering. And, you know, not to harp again, April 9th. We've yes. got a judgment coming down from North Carolina. According to what he said, he led us to believe he's going to wait till like April 8th or something. I hope not. Who knows? But yes, absolutely. Every one of these moves, um, everything that happens definitely speeds up no, um, negotiations. And should this rumor be true, should the alleged fact of this conversation between the ACC and ESPN happen, just like the whole um, thing of the... Uh, the the multi the ultimatum they gave us back in 2020 or 2020 or whatever it was you know to extend it again if this gets out if there is truth to this and you know yeah it, it's going to be anarchy it's going to accelerate what i was talking about earlier like i said if you hadn't caught chris's show from friday yeah go watch his show with james and what they're talking about again with another one of these rumors Look, I'm telling you guys, it's not just FSU, Clemson, and UNC. I mean, those are the three ones at the top. Those are the major ones. But, buddy, I mean, if you get five, six, seven, uh, I wish I was studied up. Maybe I can look up the exact number. Um, when you get to a certain number, over seven, eight teams, the entire conference pretty much dissolves, and they got to start from scratch. Um, but just to reiterate again, you don't need that. You don't need that seven, eight teams for the grant of rights and the contract with ESPN to need to be restructured. I guarantee you. And now, and here, here again, and this just goes to why we need discovery and why it's so effed up that, you know, the ACC refuses to even let the judges see it or why the judges don't want to let them see it is because I guarantee you there, there's clauses in there um, that are favorable for other people than the ACC in that. And I think it's why when ESPN got up there, they're, argument was so much different than what the ESPN attorney said. The ESPN attorney, like he nailed it. He killed his part, but he basically said like, yeah, give the judge everything. We're fine with that. That's not what the ACC said. And the ACC's whole argument is nobody needs to see it but us. Trust us on what we're saying. Um, Trust me, bro. So, source. So long story short, absolutely, Nick. Uh, I think it's sped up. Um, I, and when you say sped up, I mean, we've been pretty bear uh bullish on this thing we've been we've been saying yeah. um for a long time uh i believe it's august 15th is the date that florida state of 2024 has to notify uh actually be out of the, the acc have an actual you know entrance into the big 10 uh you know get that offer so yeah it's gonna have to have to happen pretty quick if fsu wants to be in the big 10 by 2025 um so the faster the better uh, I think everybody kind of knows how fast everything's moving. I think the speed of the playoff committee getting together, going to a 12 team, they're already talking about a 14 team. They've already pushed through all these extra automatic bids uh, for the SEC and the Big Ten. Um, I don't want to poo-poo on college football. You know, I love it. I think it's going to be just fine. But you can't ignore the difference anymore in the Big Ten and the SEC and the rest of the guys. I have been one of these guys. I'm not an ACC, ACC, but I've been yeah. one of these guys that has pounded the table for the past 20 years about there is good college football everywhere. Uh, and we've seen it. You know, there's teams in the ACC that can win a national yeah. title. Pac-12, Big 12, every single conference. You've always been able to say that. Sure, the SEC maybe consistently had that second or third, you know, good team year in and year out for the past 10, 15 years. But bam, the Big Ten comes along. But when what happened this past year and everybody, you know, last offseason was saying, no way in hell Oregon's leaving the Pac-12. Washington would never. This would never happen. That would never happen. Well, guys, the Pac-12 collapsed. The entire country saw it. Everybody saw it. The ACC saw it. FSU saw it. Clemson saw it. Like things are happening fast. And when you really uh, declawed the Big 12, in the Pac-12 by taking all their best teams and moving them to the SEC and the Big Ten in one year. I mean, it's just the ultimate change of the college football landscape. There's no going back. Um, those comp it's just they're worth too much money. The only way to compete is to join them. Um, and Notre Dame as well. We can talk about that. But uh, um, the we, we touched on it a bit Friday. I don't think the independent Notre Dame route 
as a, it would just be a means to an end. The only way I would possibly see that would be for one season, say whatever it didn't get handled um, by September or, or by August. Uh, and FSU had to wait till 2026 to go to the Big Ten. That would be the only possible way I could see that happening. But again, uh, I don't even see that happening. Uh, Kerry Gold Knowles with 9.99, the gold Easter egg right here on Easter. We appreciate the Easter egg, Kerry. From what I'm hearing, if we leave the ACC, then our grant of rights with us, and that's why Clemson knows already. Kerry is a dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, we sure appreciate you, brother. Um, and if I read that right, um, exactly. That's kind of what we were getting at earlier um, through the arguments and the amendments and the back and forth between FSU in Florida and in North Carolina. Clemson really parsed through that. And they went with a little bit of a different strategy when they opened up, uh, like Carrie is alluding to here. Um, Carrie, the dude, um, and basically said, look, um, in other words, the ACC and ESPN has been selling everybody a bill of goods like this unbreakable contract. This that basically that was a bunch of bullshit the entire time, because when I'm out of here, you know, like all these things only apply to ACC games, ACC this, ACC that. So just the act of getting out, um, they don't hold their rights only to the rights of the games that were played in the ACC. So sure, um, should whatever happen, it has to go that way and ACC and FSU and Clemson go elsewhere. There's a chance the ACC could own like the 2013 season, um, you know, all those games that were played at Doe Campbell, uh, the way I understand it or things of that nature. But as far as the new money, the money for say making the college football playoff in 2025, 26, 27, down the road, no, they can't. Um, and that's the basic of the art basis of the argument. Now, judges could vote anyway. Um, so I'm not saying necessarily that is going to be the argument that gets through, but make no mistake at the very least. And we've talked to Doug Rohan. We've talked to Danielle Kelly. We've talked to tons of different people. Um, Jen is a hell of a businesswoman herself. We've had Bill Farley mm -hmm. from Substack. We've talked to Chris, we've talked to James, tons of people that have really been into this for the past couple of years and ourselves. I know I study it like crazy. I've read every single document at least once. And, um, and yeah, I just, I, I, I forgot where I was going there, but Brock and rant says I come in peace. Jen Santino, no happy <laughs> Easter. So we appreciate a cane coming in peace with Thank the dollar 99 super chat. Everybody gets up there. So we appreciate you rack rack and rant, uh, for, uh, for the donation where was i going with that whole rant right there where was i talking about before i got lost uh, in i wish i could tell more. you because i mean you you did say i was a good businesswoman i appreciate that yeah. um but I've, i don't I've, know where your point well, was i, I talked to you guys and and i was like i talked to you guys about it but i can't remember what it was i talked to you about that you agreed with me on it dang anymore. rock and rant dragged you off but we appreciate it. We appreciate the super chats. Super you guys, I'm yeah, kidding, I'm can, kidding. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. You guys joking. can interrupt us with them all day <laughs> long. I just can't even remember where the hell I was at now um, on that rant. Uh, I've talked to you guys. What was I talking to you guys about? Um, we were talking about just the lawsuit, the date, um, What they're doing well i will say uh with tony his question in the chat is notre dame got another sweetheart deal for them cfp they will be independent till 2029 minimum i i kind of agree with that i think until you guys until college football starts putting their nobody in the <laughs> chat remembers what i was talking about y'all gotta help me out here <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is very important that y'all know this. This is breaking news on the channel, and I just lost it in the freaking middle of the ring. Sorry, guys. Nobody in the chat knows. Fuck. Uh, you take the so, show. I'm uh, muting it, and I'm listening. Okay. All right. You were talking about how – oh, no, Tony. That's not what he was saying. Stop it. You're going to get me in trouble because he told me to take it over. All right. So, um, Notre Dame, I agree with you, Tony. I think Notre Dame really is going to stick this out for right now. I, I just don't see them moving. Why should they? They were just giving another, they get voting rights in the ACC. 
They get full payments pretty much, supposedly, allegedly. Everything I say is false, except for everything that isn't. Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I think uh, Notre Dame has been given a free pass, and they always will. And we can either hate on it or just deal with it. And I just choose not to care because they don't win anything, so it really doesn't matter. You can get paid all you want to, but if you don't win anything, it just continues. You, we could just... It gives me material to make fun of them, so I'm cool with that. You know, I love to make fun of people. I mean, I'm not a bully. Oh. Am I, Brad? <laughs> I wasn't listening to you, Jen. I was listening back. Um, mm. But I figured it out. So the point I was making that I said I talked to Doug, <laughs> I talked to Danielle Kelly, I talked to Jen. So worst case scenario, we talked about how FSU, worst case scenario, they could pay $500 million. That's the worst case scenario to get their grant rights back. Okay, so worst scenario is case scenario. The ACC would have the replays of the game, say from the national championship season, all that. But anything new in the Big Ten, and as I was saying, that's how I understand it. Everybody I talk to understands it. They could not touch that money. They couldn't touch the $100 million that the Big Ten will be paying us. They can't touch the college football playoff bonus. Should we make it to the college football playoff? None of that new shit. Just the old shit that they refuse to play on ACC Network, by the way, which is kind of this whole thing. You know, FSU has a few couple years and you launch this legacy media thing. And FSU, I mean, dude, just Peter Warwick's highlights alone, you could do a whole entire Howard show. And you could do this. You could just take every FSU All-American and do a highlight show, bring in former players. There's unlimited stuff they could have done with that ACC network. Uh, but like you've let our viewers know forever, it's always like women's lacrosse and stuff like that. Nothing against women's lacrosse, but, you know, it's it's not you – know, there ain't a uh, hundred – podcast about it on youtube for one team uh and you know each one getting two three hundred people uh so again we appreciate you guys so much my phone is actually like half ass dead i may be able to get one or two calls in so i will put the number up <laughs> on the screen if it, but anybody has any calls or questions and i know i kind of jerked that whole segment up but i really wanted to remember that and pound that point home um is there anything you got on your mind jen any particular point yeah, that you haven't um, got to bring up the other thing I would say is, uh, I think somebody said uh, the ESPN is not leaving the ACC. Nobody is saying they are. What we're saying is they're going to pull funds from the ACC network. They're going to discontinue a lot of these things. They're not going to put as much effort into the ACC as if they were already, which is Lord have mercy. I mean, I don't know how you can get worse, but they will get worse. And the thing about the ACC network is it's awful right now. Hardly anybody watches it. Go look at the viewership of the ACC network. Um, go look at the ratings. Go look at the footprint, as they love to say. There are two team fan bases that watch the ACC network, and it is Clemson and it is Florida State. That's it. So you lose those two fan bases. There is no reason for them to keep this up. That is millions and millions of dollars that they're flushing down the toilet if they lose those two teams on the ACC network. I'm sorry. I love EJ Manuel. I like uh, Eric, McLa whatever his name is, McLaughlin, whatever. Uh, like, I think they're great. But we're the only people watching it, literally. Literally. So it's it's bad, but... Um, but what, what teams did they come from, right? Those are the FSU and Clemson representatives. Yes, that's what so. I'm saying. Yes. So again, the only, the only in-studio... I mean, they have that one Virginia Tech guy, but who gives a shit, right? I mean, nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody's watching. No Brim. offense, but, dude. No offense, unless you're offended, and then I'm sorry, and then I didn't mean to. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, whatever. I don't care. I just, uh, yeah. Nobody, nobody watches the ACC network other than Florida State and Clemson. Maybe a couple North Carolina fans do when they want to wake up in the morning and watch women's lacrosse or soccer or whatever it is that they are promoting in that in the Tobacco Road. Um, yeah, I did mean to, Brad. I did. I did. Um, <laughs> You're right. He knows me too well. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, you just, brought up a... It, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, that's the issue with the with ESPN wanting to pull the plug, with them not wanting to re-up, or with them pulling back finances or renegotiating. How can they make the SEC or ACC network worse? How? Because it's bad now. Can you imagine when their cash cows are gone? I don't know. It's going to be, oh, yikes. It's going to be sad. 
It's going to be sad. <laughs> it's going to be disturbing. It's going to be all the things, and it won't be getting watched. I can tell you right now, bet money. This time, we'll be on this show talking about how the Unconquered Network has destroyed the ACC's rankings thus far. Um, or whenever whenever Florida State's removed and that Unconquered Network that you can get on Roku, uh, Roku and the different things in your uh, your entertainment stores, be it iPhone or Android or whatnot, I guarantee you that streaming service will beat the ACC network. But something you brought up right there, um, I, it's got my blood boiled. It was a little bit of the conversation I got to on Twitter earlier with some funny people. Um, just entertaining goobers, but Notre Dame. Uh, I don't know if we got any Notre Dame fans watching this. Um, this shouldn't upset you. You should be just fine. The people that's going to piss off is Miami fans, Boston College fans, uh, Stanford fans, all these people that are under a complete and opposite pretense of their understanding of what Notre Dame means to the ACC. Okay, Notre Dame plays all the Olympic sports. Now, that is great. That is really cool to be able to play Notre Dame baseball, basketball, all that stuff. It's great for the kids, but it don't mean squat when it comes to money, period. Now, the argument people make is that somehow Notre Dame's relationship of playing five games against ACC teams year in, year out is somehow such a value to ACC as a conference that somehow either the current um, situation, the current contract they have will go forward. Notre Dame just being there, that'll, you know, FSU and Clemson, it's all right. With inflation, this contract will be all right. That, or they seem to think they'll get a brand new contract and some big raise. If somehow FSU and Clemson were to stay and Notre Dame just stays right where they are, they think, man, I, 2027, y'all will be able to renegotiate. Yeah, it'll be great. Y'all be just fine. Just, just keep Notre Dame in there. Guys, let me tell you something. Notre Dame does not rate like that when it plays Virginia, Boston College, Stanford, any of these other freaking teams. You know what good Notre Dame is for the ACC for those five games? You know where the value comes for ESPN, for the ACC? When they play FSU, when they play Clemson, because it gives one more championship contender elite person to throw in the mix. When all you've had as the ACC is Clemson and Florida State for decades, you get desperate. You take on a Notre Dame and pay them full price for half the work, if that. You know, you let them be a part of the championship in 2020 when COVID happens. You don't use the leverage for anything, but just yes, master. We'd love to have you. Meanwhile, you treat your teammates, your, your members of your institution like canned sardines. It's a complete and total joke. Um, that whole narrative out there that Notre Dame brings this and brings that. Notre Dame has done nothing but hold the ACC hostage and take advantage of them. And the same way that Raycom did. And people want to talk about all the different ways, all the things ACC could have <laughs> did. Of, well, FSU could have stayed good, this and that. ESPN, I'm telling you right now, ESPN does not give two shits about the ACC or they just extorted money. They're not extorted, excuse me. I did not mean to say that. Extracted money from them. But it was the ACC's fault. ESPN knew. Under the pine trees, John Skipper told John Swafford, look, they're going down this company. The SEC just fired them. They're going to go bankrupt. ESPN is going to get there. They're going to produce SEC's network. It's going to put them right in there. So when CBS is done, we'll be a big, happy family. You got to let ESPN produce this ACC network. It's going to be great. No, sir. No, sir. We got to keep Raycom in business. Whatever it takes, make this deal around Raycom so they can survive. Uh, so it's kind of the more high ground. I don't know how I got back there, but I get pissed off. But yeah, Notre Dame. Unless Notre Dame becomes an actual football member of the conference, you can quit bringing that up because they don't bring shit in terms of value. And I believe I have ignored a $10 super chat because I'm on such a good one. Uh, but <laughs> Jeff Hill, the OG, uh, been here dropping super chats since the very beginning with the golden $10 Easter egg right here on the day um, that Jesus rose from the crypt. So if that rumors are true and ESPN decides not to extend their contract with the ACC, what's that do for this case? Get it in quicker? And that means we can have negotiations faster. Similar to the question we had earlier, um, I guess I'll take it first this time. If what if that rumors are true and ESPN decides not to extend it, yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Um, if these rumors are true, so let me take the first part where you say um, if they decide not to extend their contract. So again, we've been over this a ton. They have till February of 2025 uh, to extend that contract. 
So say the suit was still going on, we were still in court and everything, and it came out that, boom, ESPN decided not to extend. And what we're talking about that they've, you know, kind of stated privately and, and you know, in conversations such and such as leaked. Yeah, it'd be over. At that point in time, the only obligation that FSU would have to the ACC and that the ACC would have to the ESPN would be through 2027. That's it. And at that point, you know, you're arguing, you're arguing over pennies. At that point, the ACC's, you know, case would kind of collapse. FSU would be really eager to just kind of pay whatever, or kind of like we've talked about, the ACC could end up paying FSU, like in your absolute best case scenario. So I'm glad you asked this question, even though it's similar to the one earlier, because it goes back to how I started the show. There's no way in hell. So with that, with that date of February, 2025 for ESPN to decide, you know, the ACC, it's like in the NFL when you've got a player that's set to make $20 million the next year, but it's the last year of his contract and that's it. You know, he's going to be a free agent. So if you get that last year, you're going to lose him for nothing. Or do you trade him right now and get, you know, a second round pick, a third round draft pick if you possibly can. That's where the ACC is with FSU and Clemson. While this contract's still in there, while it's still up in the air, whether they're going to go forward or not on February of 2025, um, that's the question. Um, so, yeah, that, I love that question, Jeff. And, yes, absolutely. Uh, that would be the end of it all. Boom. My guy, Kerry, go Knowles, gives five memberships right here to the renegade report man we really appreciate you guys we've got over 50 members now um we had been just on a gifting spree where we had mm -hmm. got like over 100 but we never got under 50 we've got a bunch of you guys that re-up every month so we really appreciate you and everyone that you gift um it's been really crazy lately with the cases yeah. and just trying to keep up with family stuff and holidays and everything else um but we promise you um if you've been around for a while you notice how we do things we go on kind of spurts where we we have some great uh guests and do some fun new stuff we've got an interesting show in the works that we've been kind of plugging for a while that tiny hat and jen are going to be hosting it's kind of got slowed down mm -hmm. but uh it's coming it's coming we're having a lot of fun and uh uh, yeah, again, I absolutely love it. I got the phone number up. There's like 230 of you guys live in here. Yeah. Um, we said we'd go for an hour, but hell, we'll, we'll go longer if the questions keep coming and the conversation um, kind of stays germane to FSU and we don't get anything crazy. Uh, but again, if you have any questions or takes or something you just want to get off your chest, more than welcome to hit that call in line right now or forever hold your peace at 850-495-1906. <laughs> yeah. This is, and by the way, um, I just have one thing I need to say real quick. Absolutely. How about those, how about those balls still not being able to make it to a final four? I <laughs> couldn't be happier. I'm sorry. I don't care. Um, there isn't anybody I would ever laugh more at than the fact that Rick Barnes can never get far in the end. I mean, whatever. If anybody remembers this man, this same coach, had Kevin Durant lost in the first round to Wake Forest, by the way, to Wake Forest. <laughs> and we're supposed to believe that with the Tennessee Bulls, who still can never do anything of any importance, is going to get far in the tournament. Cool. I I'm good on that. <laughs> Ayer Rao says, or. Yeah, I think I said that right. Let me know, because you, you're always comment. I don't know if I've asked you this before. I want to make sure I say that right. But ARL says, bring Angry George version to the show more often. <laughs> he's more likable when he's calling out the BS. More of that, please. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, like I said, I've got, I'm like 50% Greek. I get a little fired up. Uh, you know, we're getting more and more comfortable. It's coming <laughs> out. Uh, these guys, you know. We try to keep it as professional and as fun as we can, you know, at the same time. But uh, but no, I, I appreciate a good rant, too. So uh, we'll keep them coming. I'll try to uh, who knows, maybe we could have kind of something that whatever pisses George off for the day uh, and we'll hit it, have a segment. But uh, yeah, that whole I thing with Notre Dame really just grinds my gears. It's like I don't and it's not even their fans. It's people from other conferences and stuff like act like Notre Dame is some key member or key part of what's going on and uh yeah it makes my blood pressure go up fast 
Well, and I think, you know, I think with Notre Dame, I think what everybody needs to understand is most ADs are jealous of Notre Dame. And that's true. This is true. Most schools, most institutions are, this doesn't make Notre Dame better. It's just that Notre Dame gets treated a little different than they do. And there's a jealousy factor there. And I, I get that, you know, I'm petty as shit, obviously. So, I mean, I get it. But um, at the end of the day, Notre Dame is not going to make a playoff unless they go undefeated. And honestly, there would have to be quite a few one-loss teams for Notre Dame to jump them at this point because Notre Dame's schedule is a little weak. We all know this. And Notre Dame's performance in the playoffs has been, well, um, interesting, right? Uh, and, you know, you think 63 to 3 is bad. Try doing that in a playoff game. And that would <laughs> almost happen, like against Notre Dame and Georgia. Like, are we kidding ourselves right now? Um, so, yeah, I just, with Notre Dame, I get the hate. I don't like them a lot either. I think, um, you know, I think they're, you know, they suck. They're not very good. It's, I mean, you know, don't they're, just, how you feel they're about not it, great. Man. I mean, I'm not saying anything mean. I'm saying something factual. Their their academic standards are so, you know, look, Notre Dame is just not relevant in football, except for the fact that they get ratings and they make a lot of money. And I get that. And that makes them relevant. But they don't win on the field. Like, let's stop. They got the shit beat out of them by by Louisville last year. Louisville, who, who Florida State undefeated got left out because – they didn't allow that offense to score. Are we kidding ourselves right now? Notre Dame's so good. They got the shit beat out of them by the team that Florida State got kept out of the playoffs of because they wouldn't allow them to score. I am so, I'm just, yeah, Notre Dame sucks. I'm sorry. If, if Louisville's terrible, uh, Notre Dame is <laughs> like beyond the pale of terrible. So I, I don't have any words for you on this one. I'm sorry. No, and I know I have a state too, by the way. Sorry. Absolutely. Um, whenever you get to talk into the chat, I just back off. I know you're fired up. So we need our, <laughs> we need our gin rants as well. Um, but Tony, before I get to your question, I just want to address one thing that Chris or Chris, one thing Jen brought up there that it's an extremely salient point. She brought up Notre Dame's schedule. Okay. And we've been talking about this. Oh, five games with the ACC. Well, I want you guys to all stop and think how Notre Dame survived as an independent by playing the ACC by, like a fiddle, by playing yep. these other teams like a fiddle. But here's the issue. Okay, those five games in the ACC, well, Notre Dame counted on those to get their playoff berths, to get to the national championship because they would have a Florida State. They would have a Clemson. They could possibly play, and I don't even know what the top teams they played out of the Pac-12 and all the different conferences was. Well, they but do as we talked about earlier, one second, USC, as right? we talked yeah. about earlier, all the championship contender teams are all in either the Big Ten or SEC now. The only ones left are FSU and Clemson. So the ultimate ending of this ACC suit and what's going on is that FSU and Clemson will not be the last ones left out. They're out. We're just signing out when, how much it's going to cost, et cetera. So when that happens, okay, it's the same reason we don't believe FSU will be an independent, and it's the main reason I think Notre Dame is going to have to join the Big Ten because they're not going to have anyone left to schedule unless the SEC and the Big Ten bow and say, okay, we'll allow you to be an independent and we'll give you five opponents a year. But I don't see that happening, and I don't see Notre Dame getting to the playoff, as Jen alluded to, unless you're absolutely undefeated with a schedule that has none of the last national championships from the past 50 years. It's not, you know, beating Louisville and uh, whoever else is left in the big 12 and, you know, Colorado and Syracuse, that ain't going to cut it. You're going to have to beat a couple of good teams each year. And uh, I'll have to look back. I'm not sure how many out of conference games they've had with the sec and big 10, but it's going to be a new deal going forward. I don't know if they have anything on the books, but it's different and they're not going to bow. Uh, but Tony, <clears throat> Tony Vlashen's question, I hope I got that right. Wouldn't it be in FSU's best interest to wait and see what ESPN does in February? I mean, there is hundreds of million dollars at stake at all. Um, this goes to, this was actually addressed earlier, uh, but I guess I could try to word it a little bit different, Tony. Um, so right now, the ACC 
has all the only leverage they'll ever have in the entire world. So the ACC's deal is to try and extend this contract, get something done, extract their money. How I was talking about when I came in um, with that, you know, you're sitting on a, a draft pick and you're sitting on an NFL player. He's a pro bowl guy, but he's only got one year left on his contract and he's going to leave you. You know, he's going to leave you no matter what, what do you do? You go ahead and trade him. Well, from the way your question's framed, FSU should just sit back, you know, play this season and see what happens February of 2025. Well, the issue with that is, as we've also talked about, FSU needs to announce by August of 2024 in order to play in the Big Ten in 2025. So that's one reason they have to move forward. And also a big part of FSU's case is simply the fact that every month, every day that ticks by now, it's getting exponentially worse. Like we can't really afford to wait. Say they waited till next year, there's a chance. Um, but um, that goes into exactly what the ACC is trying to do. You can't risk them bullshitting the ESPN or doing some new contract, finding some new way. Um, it's kind of now or never, you know, it should have happened a long time ago. Um, but that is that's definitely a good point, and I tried to cover it as best I can. Um, but no, definitely a good point. It's really it's a you know it's a chess game. It's a, a game of intrigue, but it's one into where yeah, Florida State could probably wait and get off maybe cheaper. They maybe you know could not even um, you know it could just be a moot point. But I think just it's just time. Uh, but yeah, great question. Yeah, did I miss I'm another super chat? Boom, I did. Go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead and do that one. Okay. Kerry Go Knowles, our guys, back with another $9.99 no, $9 golden egg here on Easter. Is it just a rumor, or is Notre Dame getting paid secretly more than everyone else in the ACC? Puke emoji, pissed emoji, turd emoji, all that stuff. I don't think they're getting paid more. I think they're being paid more than what the ACC told the other members they would be paid. That is a very um, so. Or I'm going to say, or the same, say, or the same. First of all, I'm going to say allegedly um, to protect myself from litigation. Allegedly, allegedly, um, it is allegedly. Um, I have not seen, you know, um, not that mainstream media or newspapers or this or that are any more um, credible, as we've kind of pointed out to you. But you, like you can get some good information. But I don't like getting sued. I think where I would say yes. It is a fact is that what Notre Dame does for the conference, what they bring to the table and their contrib their contribution is, say, a third of everyone else. And they're getting paid the same. So, in fact, that is getting paid much, much more because uh, they're like a, a school teacher that's off for three months, you know, getting paid overtime all summer. You know, like that would be amazing and stuff, not picking on teachers or anything, but uh but yeah, while everybody else is teach teaching summer school, the, the teacher that doesn't gets paid the same as everybody else. That would be that was like, but uh, we got us a call coming in here. You're live on the Renegade Rundown. Sorry if the phone dies, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> hey, this is Nick. I'll try to get out fast. Nick Snyder, what's um, up, my man? Yeah, so on the idea of the SEC playing defense and trying to get our services, do you guys think FSU has a lot of leverage there? Because frankly, for that snub, I'd be having them pay for our buyout. Uh, compensation for how the millions we lost from not getting into the playoff and then a full share. Man, nice question. We appreciate you, Nick. I, uh, absolutely. Can I take that one? Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think the SEC is going to play defense. That's why I said that. I just don't think that they're able to offer exactly what Florida State would want or will offer what Florida State would want in order to not go with the one they've been going to this dance with for the last two years, honey. Um, we all know this. Uh, I just, I don't see it happening. Maybe it will. We we don't know. Maybe ESPN sits down with the SEC and says, hey, look, we can't, we can't lose these teams. You're going to have to do. And I think, I don't know if it would go as far as paying a buyout I think it would be a full share. I think it would be, but again, I just, I don't see Florida State taking it because they just came out of being a redheaded stepchild in the ACC and they don't want to do it in the SEC and that's exactly what they would be. I'm sorry. 
Like, I, I just don't see it. Yeah. As much as I would like to get here on my soapbox, soapbox and give you another pissed off rant about why the SEC sucks and I would never go join it and they don't know shit about business and this and that. Look, no, they've had great leadership. They have done an amazing job yep. promoting their brand. Uh, yep. It is absolutely one of the two very best. And right now, without FSU and Clemson off the board, you could say probably has the edge over the Big Ten right now. They are mm -hmm. that dude. But for FSU and the value it provides to Fox and the Big Ten, I know everybody's tired of hearing that um, as an <laughs> answer, but the value is just so much greater to being, you yeah. know, just another team in the South yeah. uh, in the SEC versus being the only team in the Southeast and really opening that entire corridor. Um, the national aspect of Florida State playing Michigan, Florida State being oh, Iowa State, Oregon, all these different games are going to feel like playoff games. Um, it's going to be really awesome. And you're still going to always play Southeastern teams. We're still going to play Florida every year. There's a good chance we might keep Miami. Um, you know, we've got Alabama on the schedule in 25 and 26. Plus, once you get to the playoff, chances are who are you going to see? You know, if you make the playoffs, at least two, maybe three teams, if you actually can make it all the way. Uh, and they're going to be from the SEC most likely. So, uh, yeah, I have no – I just – the value is all up to the Big Ten because you can get, just play all SEC teams except for every once in a while, or you can play eight or nine Big Ten teams every year and three or four SEC teams. So I think that's the ultimate win to be in front of all the fans and extract the most money. And kind of ESPN has shown with FSU where they are. But he, I got a question. Let me throw this question out here as an add-on. Okay. Uh, it's a bit of a conspiracy theory. We've all seen how FSU has been treated ever since this contract got signed. It's been different. During the last decade or whatever you want to call it, um, 06 to 09 when Tebow was dominating ESPN, like we still got the preferable ratings and the polls. ESPN still featured us and stuff. It just sure seems like ever since this new grant of rights and especially 2012, that whole national championship run, Jameis, after all that thing, is there any chance in the world like, ESPN is like, look, we don't need FSU to become, you know, the dark, the death star of college football. We're up, you know, they're in the ACC and they're up for, you know, this and that. Um, you know, it would sure make sense of keeping FSU out of the playoff this year when, uh, you know, when their value is the most important, when all this litigation's coming and before the season, it just, am I crazy to see that? Look, I, I love I conspiracy theories. No, I love your conspiracy theories. Like, I'm usually right there with you with the tinfoil hat. But my conspiracy theory that I think makes more sense is the fact that Nick Saban was retiring and they thrusted him into the playoffs. Well, no, well, I, that's not what I'm – that's just one Oh, specific. I know, I know, I'm I know. I'm just saying not, if I had to do the conspiracy totally theory yeah, off. Yeah, I agree with you on right? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Like, I would agree with your conspiracy theory if I didn't have the other one that I was already having to deal with. You know what I mean? Or right. having to agree with. So otherwise, yes, I would agree with you. <laughs> Just uh, pretty jacked up. Does FSU have club hockey? Somebody tell us that. I think I, I want to say they were talking about starting it if they didn't already. FSU hockey. Do you know that one, Jim? Uh, no, FSU. I mean, I think they had a um, like an AAU type thing, yeah. They had something, didn't they? No, yeah. they definitely do. FSU ice hockey yeah. .com. Yeah. FSU hockey .com, Uh, if you want to go check out um, what they've got going on with their, their hockey club, so absolutely, yeah. I got to make it to one of those games. I wonder if they have them in the tuck or what, or somewhere close by. Because, man, I, if you've ever been to it, it don't have to be a big hockey game. I've never been to an NHL game. Here in Pensacola, we've got the Ice Pilots. Um, well, hell, I don't know. It used to be the Ice Flyers. Ice Pilots, I think, is what it was originally. I think Ice Flyers maybe is what it is now. But let me tell you something. <laughs> hockey games are fun. And it's like, you know, high school level, sure <laughs> college level, like single A level. I couldn't even imagine what the NHL is like because the levels when you go to different leagues are so insane. And you're it's right it. there. Ooh. Like, you're right there next to the players. Like, you are, like, it's, I love, I, I'm a big hockey fan. I love hockey. Um, I love when, you know, maybe some guys fight. I love the fighting. I love the craziness of the fans. They throw stuff on the ice. I am here for all of it. All the drama. 
I I love every minute of it. So yeah, I'll watch it. Absolutely. But I watch we, like way too much mess. So don't ask me. <laughs> yeah. Um Tom the Cat messier, says, the better. Tom Cat says, George, my first game was in the 70s, watching the Flyers with the Broad Street bullies. <laughs> Man, back in the days. So that was a couple years uh before my time there, Tom Cat. But yeah, the, the ice pilots is what I remember them as back in the day there at the Civic Center. Those shows, man, uh, they were something else. But uh, we're almost to an hour. Um, what have we not covered? Any more questions, guys? I don't know. I feel like I'm forgetting something that I wanted to tell everybody. Any, you got anything, Jim? Uh, I don't. I mean, I'm waiting on this ruling from the judge in North Carolina. I, I'm trying to... I'm. I'm going back and forth on this. The longer it is, I kind of feel like the worse it is for Florida State, the longer it takes. Um, because if it was going to go against North Carolina, I think they'd do it early so that it would give them a lot of chances to up their case in Leon County. To be fair, I do. I think they would. Yeah, personally, and this is where we're kind of split on this thing, because Jen's original, you know, she was thinking it would be a little quicker. Like she said, I just I figured when he said that thing about I'll have it by April 8th, I just wrote it down. He's he's going to release it April 8th. Uh, so that's which I, I think I that. think it means it goes for um, North Carolina. So I think um, I think he's going to end up adding all the lawsuits together would be my guess. I guess or we can re maybe. we can we can retouch on that real quick. Okay, yeah, before yeah. we end, just you know, so everybody knows, April 9th, that is the court case in Tallahassee, Leon County Courthouse, and that is the one we covered Friday. We were talking about at the beginning of the show, the most recent filing that FSU made. Okay, the case that we heard that we showed you clips from the courtroom <laughs> that Doug Rohan was live at. We went live a couple hours after all that. That was in North Carolina, and the ruling is set to come down anytime between now and April 8th. Uh, that happened on the 22nd, so it was about a two-week two time period. Uh, he said, I'm not going to judge from the bench, uh, but no, no worries. I'll have it before the Florida's case, as I said, on like April 8th. Um, so there's two motions in that, a motion to seal and a motion to dismiss. Um, and it, But it's not black and white and cut and dry. There's two or three different ways each motion could go. Um, and this is where I want to give you kind of my prediction of what the ruling be will be once I lay it out and we'll let Jen give you a prediction and we'll keep you updated. Cause like we said, it could happen any day. Uh, the first one, the motion to seal. I do not believe the judge is going to succumb to sunshine laws and, and say, okay, we're going to make this thing out and open. We're going to have full disclosure. Uh, I think he's going to, rule somewhat in the ACC's favor and say that I'm going to get them. We're going to keep it in class. We're going to come up. Um, we're going to do an arbitration and come up with a way to do this, to keep the discovery in the courthouse, but not get leaked publicly, whatever that has to happen. I believe that, that he will do that. Um, now that I don't, that won't necessarily matter if the first motion of the motion to dismiss goes through, because that'll just be a moot point. Okay. If he dismisses it, I think there's a 50-50 chance he actually goes through with a motion to dismiss. But I think there's about a 0% chance that he goes through with a motion of to dismiss with prejudice. Okay, so what that means is I think there's a 0% chance the judge throws out the case completely out of the North Carolina court, and that's it. Florida is, is the court of, um, of prudence. I think what the chance is, you have a 50-50 chance he throws – he. He agrees with the motion to defense, throws it out, but not with prejudice, and the ACC can just file suit immediately. Um, and then you end up with, you know, the same ruling on the discovery. I think he gives them a chance to file again, but basically what that ruling in the motion to discovery says is Florida State wins their notion that um, they did race to the courthouse and file that initial lawsuit without the approval of the members. And that second vote, was nothing about the first it was only about the second because that gal ca case they went back and forth on that gal case over and over again and it showed in fsu's favor that you know in that case the initial filing was thrown out and they only went 
with you know the second filing. Uh, I know that was long winded, uh, but where are you at on what you're thinking on the two motions and what it will mean uh, moving forward uh, as far as the, the case that's already been heard on uh, March 22nd in North Carolina? So I think if the judge in North Carolina decides to keep the cases as one, right? I think Florida will keep the cases, keep the case. I think then you'll have it go into um, federal court. Court. That's what I think. I just, I don't, I don't see them splitting these cases and saying, okay, so let's do a case in North Carolina, a case in South Carolina, a case in Florida for all one thing. I just don't. And I don't see these two judges giving it up unless the North Carolina judge actually does it. Then all bets are off. I just, I do think that the ACC filed this incorrectly. Based on the merits, the judge should be able to just dismiss it. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, you didn't file first. There is no, um, you know, jurisdiction there. There just isn't at that point because Florida State would have filed first because they did what legally they were supposed to do and had a public hearing and then filed, right? ACC rushed to it. But again, I don't think that's the way this judge is going to go. Um, just based off of, and maybe he does. I Again, I don't know. But I do think this ends up in federal court because should North Carolina join, we're not doing this. You're not going to do all the, because Clemson filed first. That's my issue. This is why I come down to this because um, basically with Nor what North Carolina, with, uh, I say North Carolina, <laughs> uh, with what the ACC did, they filed first fraudulently. Um, they did not do everything they were supposed to do. Um, they did it incorrectly. They didn't take their vote. They ran to sue somebody for something that hadn't happened. We all get this, right? This, this is what it is. Based on that, it should be thrown out. But will it? We don't know. Now, the other issue is Clemson did file first. Clemson did file first. Clemson in South Carolina should get jurisdiction. No question. There's no question here. Now, because the ACC decided to run in their moomoos and they're like cold cream on their face and their hair bonnet on, you know, as soon as they could get out of the house, they filed a lawsuit too, right? But now it's like, again, the Florida State lawsuit in uh, North Carolina really should be kind of dismissed. I'm not saying it should be dismissed with prejudice. I'm not, or without prejudice. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying they didn't get jurisdiction. They did it falsely. Well, so I, I know Ed, we're all 100% lockstep with you. Yeah. Um, but just, before we move I, on I, to the next question, if, if you had a prediction, go ahead and uh, on the what, what you think the judge is actually going to do on the two motions. Uh, and then we've got we've got some people actually asking some more questions. This is getting fun. I think that the judge is going to stick with his own court because I think judges love that. And I think he got assigned the same case. And I think with North Carolina on the brink of filing, I think. That's exactly what you're going to say. So you don't think, um, so you think he's going to rule in their favor completely. He's going to give them the race to the courthouse and everything. I mean, yeah, I do. Okay. And then on the motion to seal, how, how are you feeling on that? I think they're going to win on that one too. So you think I they're going to sit? Go ahead. I say this because, you know, I'm a very, you know, I don't believe really in political people or establishment people because I think they're all crooked and they get their way all the time. So that's just what I normally say. But I do say this because I think with those two cases being conjoined and si assigned to the same judge, I don't see him giving it up right now. I just don't. So when you say that they're going to win the motion to seal, do you think the judge is going to look at it or do you think they're going to win completely where they let them give them 13 pages of the 162 you're saying outright uh, wins i don't i don't i don't think they're going to win that one i don't i think he's going to ask for more information i do think that i do 100 percent um because he started questioning what they did in florida and i think that sent up some red flags for him and i'm not calling him corrupt i'm just saying two other cases were already assigned to him in the same block, I don't see him giving him up. I just don't. 
Absolutely. I don't either. But yeah, I just see it diff going different than you. But there you have it, folks. And here's the question. The first question that kind of got a conversation started in the chat. Karen Smith says, how does the grant of rights not get opened with the Florida Sunshine Law? Um, so we're currently speaking about the case in North Carolina. Um, so should the judge in his courtroom decide to apply the Sunshine State laws in some manner? Um, he reserves that right. Uh, but, you know, within the courthouse, it's not necessarily applicable to the same Sunshine State laws, though North Carolina does have some um, laws and some president there. Like we've discussed that, as me and Jen both think, the judge is going to be able to, you know, he's going to grant discovery. Uh, that's going to be discussed in the courthouse. But as far as the publicness of uh, the Sunshine State laws, it's really different than any other state to where it's all out there. So, I want, you know, here we go. Here's something fun for the show. I'm going to dispel a myth. There's this thing out there and it's called Florida Man. We've all seen it. Uh, Florida Man toilet blows up in his outhouse, uh, you know, smoking a cigarette. Florida Man walking dog gets dragged off by gator and then be kill, beats it to death with stick. Uh, naked Florida man walks into Circle K and uses the bathroom on the counter and then walks away. <laughs> like everybody knows about the Florida man, but it's not like, and now, you know, no, Florida is a wild place. Don't get me wrong. Everybody that knows Florida, it's got a little bit of everything, but it's the sunshine state laws. <laughs> Florida is mm -hmm. like, there might be one other state out there, but I'm pretty sure they're the only state in the country that has anywhere close to the level of if you get arrested, if you get this and that, there's a new story for every single arrest it all gets reported so anytime anything happens the dash cam the chest cam the foia it's to a level um so that's just why you're never going to get the sunshine state laws you know upheld in a courtroom to the level of florida but um you know april 9th that's when the case happens in leon county court and 100 percent karen they will be enforced they're not getting around the sunshine state law uh, not in florida so it's going to be very interesting. I cannot wait to see, you know, I don't know if we're going to get the video, but everything tells me if you got it in North Carolina, we may get a live feed of the trial from FSU. And if that happens with a live feed, I'm here to tell you, we're probably live streaming uh, live to that one. I'll do whatever it has. I'll go rent a studio out, whatever, get whatever technology I need to get set up to where we can do that and make it smooth for y'all. That would be sick. Uh, if I'm not in the courtroom April night, though, we'll see. We're gonna we're gonna have fun. We're not gonna let you guys down. We're gonna keep it rocking. Uh, but somebody oh, else is. had a good one. Somebody's asking about the schedule of the conference, the conference, the the stadium construction. Uh, I saw a picture James posted. It's doing really well. They're already going back with construction now. Um, I believe it's the beginning of 2025, or maybe by the time the season starts, that it's supposed to be completely finished. Um, but they've got, I believe, some temporary bleachers set up somewhat on the new construction out there. I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely on schedule, Tony. That's a fact. Um, and where's the other question? King Spleen says the North Carolina judge may stay it due to his curiosity of standing. He may allow them to refile. Absolutely. And that's kind of what I was getting at when I said, yep. um, you know, that they wait, they may men, they may win the motion to dismiss, but not completely. It's not going to be without prejudice. But as far as the, the, the race to the courthouse, should he, you know, act in that manner that King Spleen is speaking about? Yes, absolutely. The race of the courthouse could be lost. And it's also, as Jen has brought up over and over again, if you're going to combine these things um, right now, they're just at the same courthouse. But if they do decide to combine these things, that's going to slow the works, gum everything up. I'm not sure exactly how it works. We'll have to get those guys on again. But just to be clear again, you know, we love talking about this. But this isn't the penultimate court courtroom. No, either. So if, no. and we've all said that settlements are going to happen before discovery comes out. So that's why we're talking about this thing like it's life or death. But for whatever reason, these things got hurried up and came to a conclusion quick in enough time where FSU or Clemson needed more time, um, you know, to, to get out or, you know, push ESPN past that. Uh, February of 2025 date. You've always got federal court and then on to the Supreme Court. And all these states have different circuit judges. So you've got the same shit you've got going on here where, you know, if FSU appeals the argument, 
they got a certain judge in the federal court system. If FSU wins and the ACC appeals it, they got a different circuit judge and so on and so forth with Clemson, North Carolina and whoever judge, you know, jumps on and not to get back and repeat. But look, what we started the show with is talking about the fact we truly, I believe the rumor is allegedly ESPN's already let ACC to know the deal. Like this ain't going to 2036, you know, it's just not going to happen. Uh, the other rumors out there of could. seven or eight teams being ready to get out unc you know it's yeah. all but just waiting on that lawsuit to judge to come out but uh that's why the urgency uh and i obviously i don't ever think it's there we we're going to stand our prediction that florida state's you know in the big 10 by 2025 and it's a beautiful thing um mike yeah. norvell and what he's doing with this program um spring practice having our first scrimmage and just seeing the clips and hearing people talk about how amazing kind of this group is every time i go through the roster and kind of see how deep this team is and how far it came in a manner of such a short time i just can't imagine what it's gonna like gonna be like when we're on equal footing with everybody else when we get over to the big 10 and we're getting our 100 million dollars a year and being covered responsibly and just the staff staying together, we're one of the only handful of staffs to come back together. Florida State's DVU, and we're not going to do a whole thing about the spring practice and stuff. <laughs> we'll get into that on the next show, I'm sure. But, yeah. you know, Florida State's DVU, it's, that's like one thing that even through the bad times, we've always kept stud defensive backs here. Asante Samuel Jr., et cetera. Durbin James towards the end of his career where things were going downhill. Like, we've always had that dude, even when we weren't national championship level. Um, but we had to make do, you know, it was kind of tough sledding, building that room back up, getting to a level. We had some studs, but there's, you know, some guys who didn't really, um, they didn't come out of the gates, you know, killing it like a Jalen Ramsey did his freshman year, but they stuck with the program and they have continued to add talent year after year. And when I look at that roster right now, it's unreal. When you think about losing an Akeem Dent to the draft, when you think about losing Renardo Green to the draft. And you bring back a guy that you think is going to be better than any of them in his area times. I honestly believe that, you know, he's going to be the best corner that like was on that entire roster last year before it's said and done is area Thomas. He's the guy that's going to be a 15 year pro get the all pros and stuff. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see, but that's my prediction. And then you go over the side to the other side and you get ACC, ACC all conference guy from two years ago, Fentrell Cypress, Cyprus coming back for a second year. Um, then you go to the, the slot corner position and you've got three deep guys who would have started in any year the past five six years at that position when you have earl little jr coming in greedy vance coming back again uh, you got kevin knowles moving back to his true position um and you've got um uh, uh, just across the board at safety shaheen brown everybody heard me talking about him last year i thought you know, he was just going to absolutely break out in a beast, be a beast. Well, he did it. He's coming back. He's starting at safety. Conrad Hussey, we all saw what we got out of him. Devontae Brown comes over and he's like a revelation. He's like turned free, different guy than he's been all of a sudden enjoying football. And he's the second safety that comes out of Mike Norvell's name. You've got guys like Ashlyn Barker. And I've said all these names. Look at all the freshmen. I haven't even mentioned a freshman name. Uh, somebody mentioned Lester, but it's like, they don't have any pressure whatsoever of getting on the field. If Lester gets on the field, it's because he's a complete dog. Like, we needed Azaria Thomas to play some snaps his freshman year. And last year, we really needed him. Um, Jabril Rawls as a sophomore is an athletic freak, but we don't have to have him, um, you know, do a ton. He's going to be just fine. But it's just, it's just a really happy time, man. It's a great time. Uh, and I couldn't be more excited. Isn't there anything in particular that you're excited about spring ball or just anything before we get out of here? Well, I'm excited for the spring game, guys. I'm excited for that. Absolutely. I can't wait to get to Tallahassee. I am so excited. I'm so excited to see everybody. I'm so excited to be at the game. Um, it's going to be fun, 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 fun. There is no doubt about that. Um, of course, we're going to be at the tailgate, the Dim Media Group, um, Spear Addicts, Dope Talk Tailgate. Uh, that's hosted by C.J. Wilson, uh, Chris Frazier, and James Coleman. Uh, me and Jen are going to be there helping and hanging out, along with On Concord 850, um, the Facebook group that our buddy Chip runs, uh, and everybody in their neighbor. I mean, you would not believe it, guys. Make sure you come. Tickets are like 20 bucks. It might have went up a few bucks now that it's April. I think they might go up to 30 or 40 but well worth it all you can eat 
all you can drink, um, all the entertainment. Um, if your kids come, there'll be a separate area where they can play and not get messed up, messed with, you know, uh, last year it was on a big grass spot. I'm not sure if exactly if it's in the same exact spot, but they've got it all laid out at the ticket Taylor site. We'll make sure you get that, that link out there, but, uh, just a super amazing time, uh, for FSU. I just, just really can't wait to see, uh, Nick that says cam looks like tank in human looks like a tank in human form. Yeah. He looks like, uh, what's the name? Who Frank Gore. He looks just like, he looks like <laughs> Frank Gore going into the draft out of college as a high school kid that's another room you want to talk about running back holy shit like don't get me wrong i love trey benson i love lawrence toa like in 2022 you just got to think those were our top two backs that's who we had to have those were our dudes 2023 those are our guys those were, okay we lost trey that stinks you know uh, he's got a chance to be a first round pick <laughs> For the shit that he's taken off the fan base, the media as a whole, how crazy is that? He goes to the combine and kills it. I mean, he, people were talking about he's got one leg coming here. Now you look at our depth chart. Lawrence to Toa Feely is a senior sitting at the top, and he's an absolute freak. And below him, you've got – who all do you have? Keziah Holmes. Um, you've got our guy <laughs> from Alabama, Roydale Williams. Um, just so many freaks. Sam Singleton. Uh, Micah High Danzi is a freshman. It's just there's so many weapons at running back now. You basically, you know, he just mentioned Cam Davis. Cam Davis is that power back that comes in. You've got Jalen Lucas, a dude from Indiana who's like <laughs> three kick return touchdowns, means he's like third in the nation in all of college football and kickoff returns. And he's also a guy that can line up in the slot or wide receiver. Same thing with Ja'Kai Douglas. Like, People are so hung up on we lost on what we lost, but when you truly look at what we lost, we didn't lose anything in a certain like we didn't lose all our wide receivers, we didn't lose all our D linemen, all our O linemen. Like it was really, you know, we lost a a D end or two, we lost a defensive tackle or two, we lost a safety or two, a corner or two. Like it didn't really kill us. Like there's going to be a drop off, but there's going to be plenty of time to develop. And I just want to hammer home: people don't realize how high. How high the talent, the floor, the ceiling, all of it has grown up. Um, the tight end group, the ceiling is through the, the through the roof, but our floor took a bit of hit of a hit with Biscuit leaving. I, you know, I can't bullshit you guys. Biscuit was a nice piece. You know, it stinks losing him. But um, where did he go? As far by the as way? talent, um, you know, I blocked that shit out. Um, Oh my I don't want to say. I, it. Even, I don't. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to say where I'm thinking and be wrong. Um, but uh, where did it was that? like an FAMU or like something like that, was it not? And it's it's Mark Easton Douglas. You know, I can't yeah. believe I was saying that wrong again. I have been saying Mark Easton, like M A R K E S T O N, just like his name is spelled. Um. But with Arizona my redneck, State, really? with my redneck accent, um, yeah. He okay. went to Arizona. Oh, okay. So that's so that's why I can't be mad at him. He he went to go be the main man with Dilly. Um, so yeah, not mad at him. Really? You know, he went out there I mean, to get get his spot, but it was a bit of a blow, you know. But you, yeah, not I mean, mad at I him. guess I guess go lose in the Big Twelve. I mean, Damn, we're not going to talk shit about Biscuit, dude. Come I'm on, not. Man. I wasn't okay. talking shit. I was talking shit about Arizona State. <laughs> like, give me a break. But I didn't talk shit about him. We got to pull I, for Arizona State, though. That's our guy. I don't have to do a motherfucking thing, okay? <laughs> Tell him. Yeah, she's right. She's I mean, right. my God. I really got it. I got team. it. <laughs> Are we I serious? No, I don't. I Let it be known. Nick Snyder says, well, hit for him going from Norvell to Dillingham isn't too bad. Kenny is a dude. Is a good dude. Yeah, that's for sure. But, yeah, we don't have to be ASU fans. That's <laughs> absolutely right. No, I don't. No, I'm not at all. I'm not. I'm not doing. I'm not in that breed of people. Like I'm not an SEC fan, which maybe that's why I am so okay with the Big Ten. I don't agree with all this. Oh my God! Because you do it, I'm supposed to just sit there and slap up your sweat water. No, thank you. Okay, <laughs> there's lapping like, up sweat water is a, is a little bit different than you can take your ass over there and fucking get loose and everything. Like that's a little different. I was just, you know, I get it. You're right. You don't have to carry I mean, water I'm, for anybody, but you, you kind of no. pull you pull for the coaching tree. I mean, you don't have to. It's not the same thing as conference pride. Like I don't have to you know. do shit. 
Okay. <laughs> I didn't say you have to do anything. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, I root for one team and one team only. And then anybody else playing, like, Tennessee or Miami. Again, or never like said that. you had to root for them, but I, I agree. No, FSC is the only team I root shits. for. Yeah. I loved Biscuit. I wish he would have stayed, and I love Kenny Dillingham. I just am not going to sit here and, like, spend my, you know, Saturdays at 12 midnight having to watch that bullshit. Like, I'm not doing that. Sorry. I hear you. Sorry, guys. Was that somebody mean? woke up and chose violence? <laughs> yes, I That's do why it we every love day. That's why I do we it every it. day. I do it every day. I'm sorry. Um, well, no, it's nothing against Kenny Dillingham, and it's certainly nothing against Biscuit. I just, you know, I have one team I root for. I wish him the best. One hundred percent. Absolutely. But like going to Arizona State when you could have been a starter at Florida State makes zero sense to me. I, I I don't know how that makes sense. I really don't. So okay. But Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the issue. That's why he went there because he wanted to be the starter. It's like at Florida State, he was just not gonna be that guy. Doesn't mean he wouldn't have still been a great piece. Um, as people are kind of talking to a super but physical. But at Florida tight State end. you get T V time. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That's different. I mean, I'm to me, if you're wanting uh, to go to talk the NFL, all the shit I, about him as you want. Like I don't like I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying, um, yes, I'm not I, I don't I don't I don't blame Jen. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, just not, this is this I'm, happens, we do this, we're having fun, it's all good. Yeah, like I'm not <laughs> trying to be mean to this poor kid. Like I get it. He left, he wasn't a starter. I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, but I'm just saying you want to go to the NFL. You're not getting NFL eyes at Arizona State. Like, I, I don't know where to tell you this unless you have a game-changing quarterback. Otherwise, they're not coming. They're not coming. You don't win enough games. You did they, Didn't they lose to Colorado, too, by the way? Like, I'm, I'm just saying, I just, like, this is not, um, if you want to make money, I get starting, I get all these things, but, like, uh, making money means being on TV, being watched, eyeballs on you, scouts coming. They're not coming to Arizona State now. Arizona State no, lost. Nobody's, no, I'm with you. Nobody's arguing why Arizona State's better okay. than Florida State. We are good. Um, That's all but, I'm saying. All righty. I well, mean, that... I think that is actually um, being nice to uh, Biscuit because I would want better for him. That's what I was saying. All righty. Well, guys, I am not seeing any more questions in the chat. We are at 122 and counting. We weren't even planning on doing a full hour and a half like normal. And here we oh. are. We have almost made it. So it would be shame not to stick around for a couple more minutes. Um, I've got 1% left on my phone. So there's a chance somebody could get in one more call. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I'm just about out of stuff to talk about. Um, again, uh, there. So <laughs> I guess we will call it a day unless you've got anything else. Nick says the kitty is cute and ready to pop. I'm so ready for these freaking kitties. Me too. I I, I've, see... I've decided we got to figure out how you can get me one. Can you bring one on the plane? Like we, we got to have one because we, we need them for the barn. It'll man. only be a couple days old. I think by the time I come down there. Oh yeah. Game, that's though, that's right? right. That's yeah, right. They need six weeks with mama. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know maybe i'll have to make another trip down there like i don't know boom so. college football mafia shows up right as we're ending hey! you got a question we're getting out of here bro you got here right at the right time if you got a question give us our ending uh segment here if not we've got about another 30 seconds and we're gonna get out of here happy we do easter. love you guys yes. happy um, easter to everyone Happy Easter and thank you all for joining us um, and pulling me away from, you know, family activities because <laughs> we can all use a little downtime, right? Um, so I appreciate it. And thank you guys for allowing us to be in your home on this holiday. So we appreciate it so much. And just to be clear for everybody out there, Jen isn't saying thank you for, you know, pulling her away from her Easter plans. Um, <laughs> oh, I no, think I she's am. talking a little bit more about like, uh, you know, the whole dealing with this family member and that family member and the whole <laughs> escape thing. Um, as far as her babies, they're, they're the best. And uh, mm. yeah, she, she would take all the time she can with those little. Yes, that's exactly that right? what I meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs>
100 percent. that's what i meant mm -hmm. thank you all righty guys well i don't see any more questions i'm gonna leave you guys with um it's easter so we're not gonna go with the poor you know the the carlos thing it's, it's a little poor language let's go with kaylin deloach um kicking ass here go north <laughs>